Hello, how are you? Good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you? Good evening. Hi. Hi. Okay, thank you for being here on time. Gracias por venir. Now we are going to begin the class. Just let me one moment, please. This is module one, two, three. Okay, did you start working in the platform already? And the section three? ¿Ya empezaron a trabajar en la plataforma? No. No. Okay, Sorry. try to... No. <laughs> no problem. This week we are going to uh, work with section three, right? Section three and midterm. Midterm is just like a review of section three and section one and two. But um, this is uh, English section three, okay. Okay, now we are going just to review a little bit of a previous class. Vamos a repasar un poco del tema pasado porque lo vimos bien rápido y era un montón de información. Y vamos a empezar con la nueva sección, con la sección 3. So, uh, in the previous class, we were talking about the past continuous versus simple past. How do we use that? ¿Quién se acuerda cómo ocupamos eso? ¿Cómo ocupamos el past continuous? ¿Para qué lo combinamos? ¿Para qué ocasiones? ¿Cuándo usamos el past continuous y el simple past? It's when you are, you are, you are doing some activity, mm -hmm. for example, and, and some, some, Something interrupt you, interrupt. Exactly. And, uh huh. And it's it's like I express that you were doing something, and suddenly something happened. Uh mm -hmm. Exactly. It's like when you are doing something, and then something happened, right? Interrupts that action. And we have some examples here. I was taking a shower when my cell phone rang. Yo estaba bañándome cuando me sonó el teléfono, ¿verdad? When Maria was walking home, she found $50. Mientras María caminaba a casa, se encontró $50. I was driving to work, but I got a flat tire. Estaba manejando el trabajo cuando se me ponchó la llanta, ¿verdad? I got a flat tire. Uh, let's see. Uh, can somebody give me an example? ¿Algún ejemplo que me puedan dar? ¿Alguien me puede dar algún ejemplo? He was, I was, was driving to my work uh -huh. when I meet with the traffic. Ajá. Uh -huh. I was driving to my work when I met, sería, met, uh -huh. met with Traffic. Uh -huh. And what does it mean, met traffic? Uh, what? Yeah, what does it mean, met traffic? ¿Qué quiere decir when I met traffic? ¿Qué quiere decir eso? Uh, Trabazo, no sé. <laughs> yes. Yes. When I found a traffic jam, right? When I ah, found, cuando uh, me encontré, wow. cuando me encontré ah, okay. traffic jam. Okay, yeah. okay. That we, when I met traffic, it's kind of weird, but yeah, when I found traffic or when I wow. found a traffic jam. Okay, okay. Very good. Another example, otro ejemplo. Another one. Another example, somebody else, alguien más, combinando el past continuous with the simple past. Uh 
Another example? No more examples? Let's see, we have Nancy, Rina, Claudia, Maximo, Claudia just participated, Maximo, Rosemary, and Sonia. Me teacher, I was uh -huh. talking to my husband peacefully when I saw the news about Turkey. Uh -huh, very good. I was talking to my husband peacefully when I saw the news about Turkey, right? The earthquake. Very good. Yes. Yeah, I was talking, but, but then I noticed the news really good. So remember that we can use it in this case, uh, the past continuous, simple past, and we can combine it, right? With these expressions, when, but, or why, right? While I was watching my favorite show, the power went out, right? She was walking home when she saw her best friend. He was cooking dinner, but he ran out of gas. Eso es lo que estábamos viendo. That was the structure that we were uh, studying. And also the present perfect continuous. Uh, when do we use the present perfect continuous for, for what kind of situations? ¿Cuándo usamos el presente perfecto continuo? ¿Para qué situaciones? Uh -huh. Who remembers? Para acciones que comienzan en el pasado y continúan en el presente. Sorry? Para las acciones que comienzan en el pasado y continúan en el presente. Yes, exactly. Sorry. Uh, for actions that started in the past and they are still continuing, right? They are still relevant in the present. No, todavía están pasando en el presente, pero comenzamos hace tiempo. Por ejemplo, I've been working for this company since 2010. I've been working. It means that I started working in 2010 but I'm still working in the company. So I've been working for around 23 years, right? Let's say, right? She's been doing exercise for the last six months. It means that she started like six months ago and she's still exercising. She's doing exercise, right? Nowadays. Let's see what else. Can you give me, a, can you give me a, an example, please? Somebody else? ¿Alguien me puede dar algún ejemplo con el present perfect continuous? Examples? Um, I, have, I have been studying piano since uh, I was five. Since I was five. Uh, I have been studying uh -huh. piano science. Since. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. I was studying. Okay, I've been studying piano since I was? Sorry, uh, Hi. Five years I mean? old? Ah, since I was a child. Very good. Uh -huh. I have been studying piano since I was a child. Very good. Uh -huh. Exactly. So it means that I've been studying piano since I was a child and I'm still studying piano or I'm still playing piano. Very good, perfect. And uh, we can use it in positive and in negative, right? Uh, and also, also contraction, right? I have been living in New Jersey since 2012 or negative, I have not going, I have not been going to college because of the pandemic. And also we can use it in questions, right? Yes, no questions and WH questions. Have you been practicing your dancing? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Or WH, right? Where have you been doing exercise? I've been doing exercise at home, right? So we provide more information than a yes or a no. Those were the topics that we were studying before. 
Uh, I just want to make sure that if you have any question, any doubt, alguna pregunta que hayan tenido, questions about the present perfect continuous, about the, the passive, right? I'm sorry, the, the simple past and the past continuous. Any question? No questions? No. No, okay, everything's clear. Perfect, so we are going to continue with the next section, okay? Have you checked the platform already? Ya vieron lo que, o ya medio vieron lo que, los temas de la sección tres? Do you have any, any question about that? Uh, I, I don't remember. You don't remember the, the topics? No. Okay, we're going to check them right now, so no problem. Let's see, Claudia, do you like movies? Yes, I do. Yes, okay, exactly. So that's what we are going to talk about, about movies, okay? And series, I guess. That was the topic that we are going to check right now. So let's see. Just let me log in. Okay, this is the section three. And the objective for this class is in this class, participants will listen to a conversation where participles as adjectives are used in context. En esta clase, los participantes escucharán una conversación donde se usan participios como adjetivos en contexto. So, this is the movies, right? We are going to talk about movies. And it's, it says, check the movies that you have seen. Did you enjoy them? Which types of movies are your favorites? Why? What are the three best movies you've seen in the past few years? So we have different genres, right? We have dramas, we have science fiction, we have horror, we have fantasy, war, comedy, animated, and action. Claudia, what is your favorite genre? The action movies? Uh-huh, why? Because it's a, um, it's exciting. Exciting, yes. Exciting. Okay, very good. And what is your favorite action movie? Uh, the White House. And something. Okay. The White okay. House. Attack. Attack. <laughs> okay, very good. The, the White House attack? Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Okay, very good. So that is an action movie, right? Let's see. Um, Rina, who is your favorite genre? Drama, science fiction, comedy? Um, I think um, action too, but action with science fiction. I don't know if, if it is science fiction, but my favorite movie is Pirata del Caribe. And ah. it, it, it has a lot of action, mm -hmm. but it's not action like a Rambo or something like that. It's, it's a, it's different. Yes, it's, it's, it's like an adventure movie, right? Yeah, yeah, it's my favorite kind of movie. And then Shrek, Shrek. I love, Shrek. I can see Shrek all the time, all days, and I, I never get bored. Really good, Shrek, Shrek is really good actually. It's a comedy and also it's an animated movie, right? Very good. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's romantic. Hey, it's romantic. It's an adventure too. 
an so, adventure yes he had a lot of genres exactly very good and let's see uh jeffrey what is uh, your favorite genre of movies um maybe science fiction or i don't know for example superhero movies superhero movies what is your favorite science fiction movie avengers infinity war avengers infinity well, the war first, the first of so i don't know the name exactly okay very good the first one okay perfect so that's science fiction or superhero movies i guess the superhero movies is a new genre also but it's because it combines a lot of things and and it, it always have it always has like superheroes right really good perfect and let's see another person wendy what is your favorite movie wendy wendy rivera Hi, my favorite movie is Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. And what is the that movie? The actress is about? Selena Gomez. Oh, and it's a, a romantic or a comedy? Comedy. It's yes. a comedy. Oh, okay, yes. very good. Perfect. Do you remember it? Have you watched it recently? ¿La ha visto recientemente? Mm, no, no, I no. don't. Okay, long time ago. Um, three months. Oh, like three months ago. Okay, very good. So Monte Carlo, do you recommend that movie? Yes, I like it because my favorite actress is Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. Okay, yes. very good. Perfect. Yes. Actually, I I didn't know if I have watched any of her movies, but probably I will watch one of her series. Nice to have you back with us. Okay, are you able to watch or to listen to the video? Yes, yes. teacher. Yes. Okay, let's see here. Yes. So, can you yes, tell me you can you the full right now? Okay, I will. I will try. Let me see. Can you tell me which movies have you seen? The next conversation is about two people trying to decide which movie to see tonight. Try to listen carefully for details. What's playing? Part A. Listen and practice. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Hmm, maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Now that you have listened to the conversation, tell me what happens next. What do they decide to do? Write it on our discussion box. Yeah, her last movie was especially good. It's probably one of my favorites of all time. Actually, I didn't see that, but I heard it was just okay. Well, I'll call the theater and find out what time the movie starts. Hello? Could you tell me what time the new Halle Berry movie is playing tonight? I'm sorry. The Halle Berry movie closed last night. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Thanks. You won't believe this. It's not showing anymore. It just finished playing last night. Oh, no. I guess we're back where we started. Why don't we just see what's on TV tonight? That's fine with me. Okay, very good. What was the conversation about? About to go to movies. Exactly. And what movie are, what are they going to watch? ¿Qué película iban a ver al principio? Well, they, they didn't say the name. Just that is the, the new movie of Halle Berry. 
Halle Berry, exactly. The new Halle Berry movie, exactly. And what happened at the end of the conversation? Did they watch Halle Berry movie? Did they went to the movie theater? Did they go? No, because if mm, what happened at the end? Do you want to listen to it again? Okay. Okay, I, I will play it again. I will play it the last time. Lo voy a poner la última vez y me dicen qué es lo que pasó al final, okay? Let's see. Theaters right now? Can you tell me which movies have you seen? The next conversation is about two people trying to decide which movie to see tonight. Try to listen carefully for details. What's playing? Part A. Listen and practice. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Hmm, maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Now that you have listened to the conversation, tell me what happens next. What do they decide to do? Write it on our discussion box. Yeah, her last movie was especially good. It's probably one of my favorites of all time. Actually, I didn't see that, but I heard it was just okay. Well, I'll call the theater and find out what time the movie starts. Hello? Could you tell me what time the new Halle Berry movie is playing tonight? I'm sorry. The Halle Berry movie closed last night. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Thanks. You won't believe this. It's not showing anymore. It just finished playing last night. Oh, no. I guess we're back where we started. Why don't we just see what's on TV tonight? That's fine with me. Okay, perfect. So what happened at the end of the conversation? <laughs> what happened at the end? Did they watch Halle Berry's movies or movie or did they watch another movie? No, uh, the movie not showing anymore. Exactly. The movie was not showing anymore at the movie theater, right? So they stayed at home, right? Okay, very good. So what is the meaning of what's playing? What is the meaning of that? Uh, what does but, it mean? What's but playing? Movie, what movie? Uh -huh. Present. Exactly. What's movie? What's playing? ¿Cuál película están dando, right? What's playing? Okay, mm -hmm. we are going to practice this conversation. If you don't know any word, or the pronunciation, just let me know, okay? I will read it first because you already listened to it. And then uh, after I uh, read it, you will be able to practice it. It says, do you want to see a movie tonight? Maybe, what's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Do you have questions about pronunciation or any meaning? Preguntas? No questions? Okay. No. Okay. So I need two volunteers, dos voluntarios, para que practiquen la conversation. Two volunteers? Rosemary. Okay. Rosemary will be Carol and Patricia will be Roger. Okay. So you begin, Patricia. Okay. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Maybe. What playing? 
How about the new James Bond films? I hear is really exciting. Actually, the last one, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novels? I don't know. The books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new other movies. It looks good. That's fine with me. Should she's wonderful actress. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Very good. What is the meaning of exciting? What does it mean, Patricia or Rosemary? What is the meaning? Exciting. Emocionante. Emocionante. And boring? What is the meaning of Aburrido. boring? Aburrido. Perfect. Perfect. Exactly. So exciting is the opposite of boring, right? I need two other volunteers. Otros dos voluntarios, por favor. Another two volunteers, please. Otros dos que quieran practicar la conversación. Jeffrey, okay. And another person? Someone who wants to help? Yeah, okay, Sonia. Okay, Jeffrey will be Roger and Sonia will be Carol and then Wendy, okay? Okay. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Mm -hmm. Maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about a movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interest, interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Very good. Perfect. Let's see, Sonia and Jeffrey, what, what is the meaning of interested? I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. What is the meaning of interested? Interesante. Interesado. Inter interesado, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's different, right? Interesting, interesante. Mm -hmm. Interested, interesado, right? I'm interested in, in the new Halle Berry movie. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Very good. And Wendy, uh, do you want to participate with the conversation? Yes. Okay. Uh, which one do you want to read, Roger or Carol? Carol. Carol. Okay. Who wants to read Wendy? Alguien que quiera ayudar a Wendy? One, two. Me, teacher. Melissa. Okay, Melissa. You will be Roger, so you will begin, okay? Thank you. Go ahead, Melissa. What, do you want to see a movie tonight? Maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I heard it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. Mm, mm, what about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating. But I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new Harry Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Thanks. Okay, perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. and let's see, uh, what is the meaning of fascinating? What is the meaning of that? Fascinante. Fascinante, exactly. And what does it mean, the movie based on Stephen King's new novel. What does it es mean? Una, es una nueva novela basada en Stephen King. Ajá, uh -huh, basada en un libro de Stephen King. Very good. So it's based on a Stephen King's new novel. Perfect. Very good. Very good. Let's see here. So uh, we have another objective. This It says, by the end of this class, participants will comprehend how to use present participles and past participles as adjectives. 
So this is what we are going to uh, read, right? We are going to study present participles and past participles as adjectives. But what is a participle? Who knows that? ¿Qué es un participio? ¿Quién sabe qué es un participio en inglés? What is a participle? Suggestions, ideas, comments, no? Okay, let's see what is a participle. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Nancy, can you read the concept of participle? Are you able to read it or it's too small for you? Good evening, teacher, and everyone. Okay, hello. Can you read it? Yes, I can. Okay, please. Okay. Participles and adjectives. A participle is a form of a verb used as either an adjective, the hiding treasure, or a part, or a part of certain thing, uh, certain tenses. We are hiding the treasure. Participle have two different types, the present participle and past participle. A participle used as adjectives can form a longer participle phrase. Hiding in the bushes, the treasure was hard to see. Participles are a particular form of verb that has two main purposes. One, turn the verb into an adjective to modify nouns. To connect with auxiliary verbs to create different tenses, such as the present perfect tense. Perfect. Thank you very much, Nancy. So as we can see here, it's talking about participles as adjectives. Solo vamos a estudiarlos como adjetivos. And it says here that we have two participles. Tenemos dos participios. El present participle y el past participle. Los presentes participios. Y los pasados participios, y esos, esos son los participios que existen. For example, the hidden treasure, el tesoro escondido, ¿verdad? Hidden es escondido. So hidden is a participle, right? It's a participle. Or we are hiding the treasure, estamos escondiendo el tesoro. Hiding is another participle. Pero dice ahí que hay dos propósitos. Uno es turn the verb into an adjective to modify nouns, que es lo que vamos a ver. El número uno es el que vamos a estudiar, que se convierten en adjetivos para modificar nombres. Los adjetivos modifican nombres, ¿verdad? Y número dos, connect an, uh, with auxiliary verbs to create different tenses, such as the present perfect tense, que también lo usamos para los, los tiempos, ¿verdad? Como el presente perfecto, o el presente continuo, ¿verdad? Uh, we are hiding or we are hiding the treasure. Los ocupamos para hacer tiempo, ¿verdad? El presente perfecto que lo acabamos de ver, utilizábamos participios, pero ahora lo vamos a utilizar para adjetivos. To create adjectives. Let's see another uh, person. Um, let's see Claudia. Can you read, please, this? Teacher, I can see the the imagine. The, the letter, the, the letters you cannot see is too small for you. No. Alguien que me ayuda a leer que pueda ver las letras que estén en una computadora. Somebody. Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead, please. Participles as adjectives. Here's an example of participles used as adjectives. Let's say you are at two looking at others. One other is eating and another is swimming. You could distinguish them by saying, look at the eating, look at the eating other, or look at the swimming other. I, in these examples, the birds eat and swim are not acting as verbs. They are acting as adjectives because they modify, modify the noun utter. Mm -hmm. 
participles are words that usually end in L, E, D, sorry, sorry, uh -huh. end in E, D or I, N, G, mm -hmm. and thereby from verbs. However, there are many irregular participles that don't have these endings, such, uh, such as grow, hidden, and broken. Uh -huh. a, part, a participle adjective simple sim, how simple uh -huh. takes a participle and uses and uses it as a as an adjective for example i put on my running shoes uh -huh. she was really tired exactly so what is saying here thank you thank you for reading uh, this long text gracias por leer so what he's saying here is that participles, we can use it at, as adjectives. And he was talking about authors, right? Do you know what an author is? Saben que es una author? No? We are going to look for it here, but vamos a buscar aquí. Author. Y la vamos a agregar. Sorry, this is not author, box defender. So it's an author. This is an otter, right? An otter is an animal. So this is an otter. And this is a, what he's talking about. For example, it says that we are at the zoo, que estamos en un zoológico. He said, look at the otter, right? The swimming otter. Instead of saying the otter that is swimming, en lugar de decir, eh, mira la la marmota que está nadando, decimos the swimming otter, la marmota nadadora, ¿verdad? La, 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 mar, la, la, la que nada, ¿verdad? The otter. Entonces, the swimming. Y ahí ya estamos ocupando swimming, swimming otter como un adjetivo. So, otter is, is an animal. And we have other examples here. Es una nutria, sorry, es, no es una marmota, sino que es una nutria. Otter es nutria. For example, I have here two, two words, right? I put on my running shoes. Me pongo mis zapatos de correr. Así se traduce en español. But in English, it's running shoes. So running is a participle and it's an adjective, right? And it... Now, here it is before the now, but it, tired is a, it's another participle and is acting as a, an adjective here. She was really tired. Ella estaba muy cansada. She was really tired. So that is another adjective. Entonces, ocupamos estas formas verbales con ing o que terminan en ed para hacer adjetivos, ¿verdad? It's like in Spanish, ¿verdad? It's like in Spanish. Um, uh, like for example in Spanish we say acabado por ejemplo yo he acabado tú has acabado ella ha acabado verdad en este tiempo verbal lo ocupamos para hacer eh, un tiempo verbal yo he acabado pero también puedo decir me siento acabado verdad acabado también es un adjetivo entonces lo ocupo para Tiempos verbales y lo ocupo para adjetivos. Me siento acabado, me siento cansado, me siento acabado. So, it is the same. It is the same in English and in Spanish is the same. So, this will be the, uh, these are the examples, right? So, the two uses of participles are verb and adjective. For example, uh, this is an adjective that describes a noun. The white cat ran away from John. White is a color, right? So, it's an adjective. The movie was really exciting. Exciting is an adjective, but it's a participle, exciting. So we have present participles and past participles. Los past participles ya los estudiamos, ¿verdad? La, la semana pasada. Los estudiamos con los, las tenses, the present perfect tense, uh, the, yeah, the, pre, the, the present perfect, actually. Uh, we studied the, the past participles. In the formulas, if we if go back to the formulas, si vemos las fórmulas de antes, ahí dice past participle. 
Entonces tenemos dos tipos, uno que termina con ING y el otro que termina con ED, o si son irregulares, pues cambian, ¿verdad? So, exciting. Exciting termina con ING. Exciting is emocionante. Excited termina con ED. Excited is emocionado. So, exciting describes a noun. And excited describes the feeling of a noun. Una cosa describe un nombre y otro cómo se siente, ¿verdad? Los feelings. Feelings son sentimientos, ¿verdad? Now we are going to explain a little bit more. For example, the museum is interesting. El museo es interesante con ING, ¿verdad? I am interested. Yo estoy interesado. So it's different, right? Interesante, interesado. The museum is interesting. I am interested. Tiring. Work is tiring. El trabajo es cansado porque me cansa a mí, ¿verdad? Work is tiring. I am tired. Yo estoy cansado. Tiring and tired. Algo que me provoca estar... Can... Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yes, questions? Sorry. Okay, I will continue if you don't have questions. So, tiring. Algo que me provoque estar cansado. Tiring. Exciting. The movie is exciting. La película es emocionante. I am excited. Estoy emocionado, ¿verdad? Por una buena noticia, por algo. I am excited. So, that is the difference. And that's why we were um, um, defining and also explaining the participles, por eso primero les estoy explicando que eran los participios, porque me pueden decir, teacher, pero eso es un, un tiempo, ese es el presente continuo, porque va con ING y a mí así me enseñaron, pero no, en este caso estamos hablando de un adjetivo, están funcionando como adjetivos. Bored, por ejemplo, bored and boring, right? The bored man went to sleep during the discussion. The boring man Put other people to sleep during the discussion. Bored es aburrido y boring es aburrido también. Pero es diferente. Bored es porque I am bored, yo estoy aburrido, por ejemplo. I am bored, pero después me va a quitar, ¿verdad? Algo me provocó el aburrimiento, yo estoy aburrido. Pero si yo le digo I am boring, quiere decir que yo soy aburrido para otros y yo siempre soy aburrido, no... no les causó eh, interés, no les causó excitement, ¿verdad? Él es aburrido, es un hombre aburrido, no habla nada bueno, ¿verdad? He is a boring man. Una consulta, perdón, solo para entenderlo mejor. Ajá. Cuando ocupamos la que finaliza en ED, es cómo me siento. Y cuando ocupamos la que termina en ING, es una descripción de algo. Exactly, yes, ajá, exactly. Is, for example, here it says, in the first sentence, the past participle bored is used to mean that the man himself was bored. In the second sentence, the present participle boring is used to mean that the man was boring to others. So, es algo así, ¿verdad? Es algo así como lo que nos hace sentir y cómo nos sentimos, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, la película no se siente emocionada porque las películas no puede sentir sino que a nosotros nos emociona. Entonces, para nosotros la película es emocionante. Entonces, decimos la película es exciting. The movie is exciting. Pero nosotros sí nos podemos sentir emocionados y nosotros sí podemos utilizar el ED, el excited, ¿verdad? We are going to practice, so no problem. Uh, do, uh, before doing this exercise, do you have any question? ¿Preguntas? I always always says i'm boring when i wanted to express that i was bored uh -huh. you, you know it's a mistake so it is not a mistake itself but ahí está diciendo usted que usted i am boring yo soy aburrida maybe but, uh, but <laughs> I was ahí está saying, diciendo it's like uh, it's the other one that uh -huh. in that moment i am bored Exactly. In, this, in that moment, in ese momento estaba aburrida, ¿verdad? No era aburrida, sino que estaba aburrida. You were bored, but you were not, you're not boring, right? Probably. Very good. You see, that is the importance of the difference. 
Now it says here, participles as adjectives. So for example, Stephen King's books are fascinating. The last James Bond film was boring. The new Halle Berry movie sounds interesting. So eso es lo que nos hace sentir, lo que nos provoca sentimientos o cómo nos hace sentir algo va a ser con ING, va, por ejemplo. Y con ED, por ejemplo, va a ser cómo nos sentimos nosotros, ¿verdad? I am fascinated by Stephen King books. I was bored by the last James Bond film. I am interested in the new Halle Berry movie. I'm interested. The movie is interesting, but I am interested. Now we are going to do these exercises. It says complete these sentences, then compare with a partner. Number one, Johnny Depp is a very amazed. What is the meaning of amaze? Increíble. Increíble. So we are going to transform it in a present participle or a past participle, right? It is amazed actor or amazing actor? Amazing. 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 Let's see. Exactly. Johnny Depp is a very amazing actor. Number two. I find animated films amuse. Amuse. What is the meaning of amuse? Amuse es divertir. Entonces, sería como divertido o divertidas, ¿verdad? So, that would be amusing or amused. Amused. Let's see. Amusing. Los films no pueden estar amused, no pueden estar porque no tienen sentimientos, ¿verdad? Nosotros sí, I am amused by the film, but the film is amusing, es lo que me hace sentir, ¿verdad? So, for my, my point of view, en mi punto de vista, el film es divertido, amusing. Pero yo me siento amused, si yo siento el sentimiento es amused, exacto. Number three, I'm not... Interest. So is interesting or interested? Con ed in science fiction movies. Interested. Let's see. Interested. Let's see. Exactly interested because I feel the interest, right? I'm not interested in science fiction movies. Four. I am bored or boring by watching television. Bored. Let's see. Bored, exactly. Right. I am bored by watching television, right? Mm -hmm. Five. I thought Jurassic Park was an excited or exciting book. Exciting. With ING? Exciting. Yes. With ING, right? With ING. Yes. With ING. Yes, ING. ING, exactly. I thought Jurassic Park was an exciting book. Six, I am fascinated or fascinating by J.R.R. Tolkien's novels. Fascinated. fascinated. With idiot, let's see. Fascinated, perfect. And seven, it's surprising or surprised that horror movies are so popular. Surprising. surprising. It's surprising. Perfect. Very good. It's surprising that horror movies are so popular. Es sorprendente, ¿verdad? Si yo digo, I am surprised, ¿qué estoy diciendo? I am surprised. Estoy sorprendido. Sorprendido. So, it's different. Sorprendente, sorprendido, ¿verdad? So, if I feel the feeling, it's ED, right? or is the past participle. Very good, perfect. So these are um, the things that I was saying before, right? That is not the same bored than boring. I, I was really bored or it was such a long, boring flight. It's not the same uh, to say she's interested in history. Then I am really in, uh, I read a really interesting book, right? It is not the same joints frightened uh, frightened of spiders, then many people find spiders frightening, right? John es, está asustado por las, eh, las arañas, 
Y las arañas son aterradoras para algunas gentes, para muchas gentes, right? It's not the same. So we usually use the past participle to talk about how someone feels. ¿Cómo se siente uno con el E de verdad? And we usually use the present participle ending in ing to talk about the person, thing, or situation which has caused the feeling, lo que nos causa el sentimiento, ¿verdad? Eh, usamos el ing. And we have a lot of participles, uh, participles as adjectives, right? We have alarming and we have alarmed. We have amusing and amused. Boring, bored, right? And we have examples here, right? Alarming, what an alarming noise. Que sonido más alarmante. I was alarmed by the loud bang. Fui alarmado por el ruido escandaloso, por, por decir algo, ¿verdad? So we have a lot, as you can see, we have a lot of examples, right? Depressing, depressed, deprimente, deprimido, ¿verdad? Embarrassing, embarrassed, embarazoso, uh, o vergonzoso y avergonzado, ¿verdad? Exciting, excited, exhausting, exhausted, fascinating, fascinated, frightening, frightened, frustrating, frustrated, interesting, interested. Uh, probably you might say it sounds, it sounds very similar, teacher. It sounds very similar. Probably I will get confused. Se suena muy parecido. ¿Y cómo voy a echar de ver cuál es cuál cuando alguien me esté hablando, verdad? Como I am fascinated or I am fascinating. Si es bien poquita la diferencia. Y the context, ¿verdad? El contexto, ¿verdad? De lo que le estén diciendo. For example, if I say, oh, the, the, the class is, is fascinating. The class is fascinating, right? La clase es fascinante. Entonces ya le estoy diciendo que es con el ING, the class, ¿verdad? I am fascinated by, by the book, by the movie, by the country, right? Estoy fascinado. So it depends, de, depende de lo que estemos hablando, del contexto nos va a decir mucho. And we have more um, exercises here. This is like a paragraph. And we have adjectives, right? Amaze, annoy, confuse, disgust, embarrass, and shock. So I will read um, the paragraph and we are going to check what is the best option, right? If it is a past participle, a present participle, um, or any of them. So it says, I had a terrible time at the movies. First, my ticket cost $10. I was really, can be amazed, right? Or amazing, or shocked, right? Estaba muy sorprendido por el precio. ¿Cómo le digo? I was really. Quiero ver si lo puedo sacar letra por letra. No. Oh, it's here. So this is the, the response. Sorry. So I had a terrible time at the movies. First, ticket cost $10. or so I was really confused by the price, right? So he was confused. By mistake, I gave the cashier a $5 bill instead of a 10. I was a little embarrassed. Then there was a trash, there was trash all over the theater. The mess was disgusting. The people behind talked during the movie, which was annoying. The story was hard to follow. I always find thrillings too shocking. I liked the special effects, though, they were amazing. So confused and confusing, right? That is uh, the difference. I was really confused. Estaba muy confundido. I was a little embarrassed. Estaba un poco avergonzado, ¿verdad? The mess was disgusting. What is the meaning of disgusting? What is the meaning of disgusting? Desagradable. Desagradable, ajá. Uh -huh. And disgusted, yo estaba desagradado, ¿verdad? Disgustado, perfect. It says, the people behind 
talked during the movie, which was annoying. What is annoying? Annoying. Ruidoso. Uh, kind of, yes. It says, cuando ustedes van al cine y dice, la gente detrás habló durante la película. Lo cual era... Molesto. Molesto, exactly. I hate that, right? I hate when people are talking during the movie because it's really annoying. They annoyed me, right? The story was hard to follow. I always find thrillers, thrillers is like a movie genre, right? Thrillers. Too shocking. What is the meaning of shocking? Impactante. Impactante, exactly. Shocking. Like very, like, like very strong feelings, right? I like the special effects, though. They were amazing, right? Special effects were amazing. Perfect. What time it is? Okay, I guess that we are going to finish right now. I will give you a homework. And tomorrow we are going to talk about more about um, series and movies and things like that. Uh, if you have a, a series or a movie, try to read about a movie or a series that you like, because we are going to use that in future classes. Si tienen alguna película que les guste, alguna serie, traten de verla porque la vamos a tratar de, vamos a ocupar esa información para las siguientes clases. And tomorrow I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a screenshot of this. Le voy a tomar un screenshot a esto. Y quiero que hagan una oración con alguno de estos participles. I need you to write one sentence with what with one of these participles. For example, if I choose alarm, alarming. So write one sentence with alarming and another with alarm. That would be for tomorrow, right? Mañana. Or exciting, excited. Eh, escriban una de con exciting y una con excited. Solo una, ¿verdad? Una con exhausting, una con exhausted. Entonces, choose one, solo elijan uno confusing, depressing, frightening, frustrating, right? And then try to write a sentence and we are going to check it tomorrow. I will send this to the group right now. Lo voy a mandar al grupo para que lo tengan ahí. De intermedio tres. En el grupo de WhatsApp voy a poner el screenshot so you will be able to see it, okay? Let's see here. So you will be able to practice and tomorrow we are going to review this topic. Do you have any question, any doubt? Preguntas, questions? Everything clear. Everything clear, like horchata. Okay, very good. So <laughs> we are going to, we are going to um, see you tomorrow. We are going to explain a little bit of this and try to write one sentence with a present participle or a past participle as adjectives, okay? Okay, have a nice night and a rest, please, okay? Please and thank you for being here. Thank you, teacher, good night. Thank you, have a good night. Have a nice night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.